Would you like to learn how to maximise your score in OET Reading Part B? Then keep on watching this video. And welcome to OET with Alex. In today's lesson, we're going to focus on reading part B, and we're going to learn and practice a procedure which will help you maximize your score and do as well as you can in this part of the reading test, okay? And we're also going to use official sample tests when we're looking at the examples and the answers, so make sure you watch right the way until the end so you get all of the tips and you can do the best you possibly can. Okay, and before we dive into that, remember that I run online OET preparation courses for Atlantic Language. Uh, it's a school based in Galway. They're great courses. They're designed to last for two weeks to take you right up until the date when you do your exams. Uh, do your exam. We look at all of the skills and all of the methods that you need to really do the best you can in OET and get the score that you need. So check out, check it out and all of the information, the link to the course is in the description to this video. Okay, so let's talk about OET part B. So this is what OET themselves say, okay? Part B assesses your ability to identify the gist, the detail, gist, or main point of six short texts sourced from the healthcare workplace. So there are 100 and 150 words, 100 to 150 words each. The text might consist of extracts from policy documents, hospital guidelines, manuals, or internal communications, such as emails or memos. For each text, there is one three option multiple choice question. Okay, so it's recommended that you spend 12 minutes on part B, okay? So if you do the maths, then you can figure out that this is just two minutes per question. So the procedure we're going to look at today really is to make sure that you read as efficiently as possible. And by that, I mean as quickly as possible, but still getting the correct answer, okay? So now let's have a look at this procedure. <laughs> Okay, so let's look at this procedure, okay? The first thing that you're going to do is skim read the text. So by that, I mean read the text as quickly as possible to get the general meaning. The heading will help, and we'll see that when we come to look at the samples, but you really just want to read it as quickly as possible. The reason that I say read the text first is because then when you look at the question and you look at the options, you have some context, okay? You've got an idea of what it's about and you can already start thinking about if things are right or wrong, okay? After you've read the text very quickly, after you've skim read the text, look at the question, okay? The first thing with the question, you have to start thinking, does, does this look like a specific detailed question or is this more like a gist or general meaning question, okay? Sometimes you can tell it's not always possible, but this will help you think about how you're going to find the answer because if, if it's a detailed question, then you're going to find the answer in one little part of the text. But if it's a gist or gen general meaning question, then it will either be the full text or a larger piece of the text. So it's important information if we can figure it out, okay? We, again, once we look at the samples, we'll be able to figure this out sometimes, okay? Uh, also in the question, it's important to highlight the key words, okay? What are really the most important things in this question that are going to help you find the answer, okay? Then look at the options and do exactly the same thing, okay? Highlight the key words, something that gives you the best possible meaning of that option, and that's really gonna help you focus on what the meaning of that is and when you are looking for the answer. Then we're going to read the text in a bit more detail and keep an eye out for distractors because remember the three options, something related to the three options 
will be mentioned in the text, okay? So we're going to look at that as well in the samples. Uh, so you'll see clearly where the key or the correct answer is, and then you can see what is related to the distractors as well. So then once you've read the text in more detail, you're ready to choose the correct answer. And you know, once you practice this procedure, you can get really quick at it and you can get really efficient and make sure you're getting the correct answer because you know, we say 12 minutes for part B, but if you do it quicker, then you have more time for tricky part C, which is definitely a good thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put up on the screen uh, a sample test of reading part B. It's from OET's website, it's sample test two. The link is in the description here. So you know, feel free to pause the video just now and get that open so we can look at it together, okay? So we're going to talk about how you would do the procedure. We're going to highlight the keywords and then we're going to analyze the text so we can see where the correct answer is and also where the distractors are. Okay, so here we have the first question in our sample test for reading part B. As I said, it's sample test two if you want to read it, if you want to open it, if you want to pause the video to get it, then do that as I already said. Okay, so the first part in our procedure is that we're going to skim read it. So look at the text, medicine cupboard keys. So that already tells us something about the text and what the, the topic is going to be. So if you want to pause this video just now and read the rest of the text as quickly as you can or look at it if you've downloaded it, okay? So then the next thing that we're going to do in a procedure is look at the question, okay? And we're going to think about if it's uh, testing specific detail or if it's a gist question. So the guideline extract says that the nurse in charge. Okay, so if we compare that to the heading at least then, you know, it doesn't seem to be talking about the full text. It seems as if it's going to be something that is actually about detail. But let's see once we look at the options and things like that. OK, so if we look at the question, this guideline extract says that the nurse in charge, I want to pick the key words here. OK, so none of this the guideline extract says none of that is actually important because it's just about the text so it's something about the nurse in charge okay that's the important information that we need to focus on here now let's have a look at the options and again we're going to highlight the key words that will help us okay so in the first option we can highlight supervise opening yeah, so supervise opening. That's the key information there. In B, we can highlight make sure and kept together. Okay, so that's the key information that we have there. And in C, the key information is delegate responsibility and maybe another ward as well is important. Okay, so if we look at the text, then I'm going to start with the correct answer. So, okay, so in this case, it's C, and to see where in the text we can find the information that tells us that that is the answer, but then we're also going to look for information which tells us, which tells us that the other two are distractors and are not correct, okay? So, this last sentence here, if necessary, the nurse in charge should arrange for the keys to be held in a neighboring ward. Okay. Well, I don't know what happened there. Let's delete that. Uh, in, to be held in a neighboring ward. That's the part that tells us that the answer is C. Okay. So that's the correct answer in this case. But what about the other ones? You know, it's good to double check these so we can see that they're not correct and where it tells us, okay? So if we look at the second sentence, they may be passed to a registered nurse in order for them to carry out their duties. So that goes against what option A says, must supervise the opening, but here it says they may be passed. So that shows us that A is incorrect. And what about B? 
in this sentence here, the controlled drug cupboard keys should be kept separately. So should be kept separately. This part here shows us that B is, is actually the opposite of this, because here it says it should be kept together and here it should be kept separately. So we know that's not right. You know, very quickly, if we are sure that C is the answer, we've got that here, we can move on to the next one and maximize our time. But if it's a tricky one, it's good to keep an eye out for these distractors. Okay, moving on to question two, and we're going to do the same thing. So first of all, read the text, skim read the text as quickly as you can, so that you've got an idea of what it's about. Again, the heading can help with this, okay? So let's look at the question. Pause the video just now if you want to, to read it, and we're going to go right ahead and look at the question. Okay, so with the question, the key words that I would pick are seeking consent and necessary okay so that's really the things that are going to give you the, the the full meaning of what the question is asking here let's look at the options and pick keywords here so valid reason give a valid reason that's really what's giving you the information here B all relatives and decline are the keywords here Okay, and in C, the keywords are after death. Remember, you don't want to pick too many keywords. You're just trying to pick maybe two, three that are really going to give you the essence of what this is asking you or the essence of what this means here. Okay, now let's have a look and see if we can find the answer. So again, Feel free to pause at this point and have a look through the text in a bit more detail because that's what you would be doing in the procedure. Okay, so once you've done that, we can see that the answer is, in this case, A. Give a valid reason for conducting it. Okay, so we can see here the person consenting will need an explanation of the reasons, okay? So that is the valid reason, so we know A is correct. What about the distractors? B says allow all relatives the opportunity to decline it, but in the text it says the most, import, most appropriate person to give consent. So that goes against the fact that it says all relatives in the option. Okay, and only raise, raise the subject after death. We can see here there's no need to wait until the patient has died. So that shows us that C is also a distractor and, you know, as you see, we can actually get quite quick at this and answer the questions in this way. So let's move on. We're going to do all six questions in this test. So keep on watching. You know, uh, these two that we looked at here have both been specific detailed questions, as we can see by the short part of text that gives us the answer. So let's have a look at the next one and see if it's a little bit different. Okay, so once again, read the text as quickly as you can. I'm going to go a little bit faster here as we're practicing that, okay? So pause the video and read the text as quickly as you can before we start looking at the question and the options. Okay, so in the question itself, there's one word which is really important here, okay? So purpose. If you see purpose in a question, this means that it is going to be a gist or a general meaning question, which means you won't find one little piece of the text, one phrase, one part of a sentence that will tell you what the correct answer is. We're looking overall at it. And so that's a, that's a really big signal there if it says the purpose, okay? Nothing else in this question is really important. It's just what is the pur purpose, is A, B or C? It's still useful to look at the keywords in the options so we get the general meaning of them. Okay, so in A, maximize efficiency, just like we're trying to do today with your reading part B. That's the key information here. 
okay and guidance on safety procedures that's key in part b and the that's key in option b sorry and the third one recommend procedure separation okay so those are the key words in part c so now i'd like you to read through the text in a little bit more detail and decide which one is correct again pause the video if you need to i think you will need to because you can't do it in just a couple of seconds okay so what did we go for the answer here let's see so the correct answer is a in this case okay uh, you see you know that b and c there are things that are mentioned about that but there's more mentioned about efficiency okay so uh, we talk about maintaining high incineration temperature that's about efficiency a good mix of waste materials should be added that's about efficiency as well we've got things that are talking about how it can best be achieved that's about efficiency okay uh, if possible some plastics should be added as this burns at high temperature so all of that part is about efficiency okay uh, most of the text is about efficiency which helps us see that the purpose there are things about safety procedures in b uh, for example it talks about something being potentially hazardous or about dark smoke but that's all it's only two little pieces of it and waste separation there's one little part there about waste waste separation so when we're talking about the purpose the general meaning there's a lot more in this text about maximizing efficiency than the other two options and that's how we know that's the correct answer okay okay let's move on to question four So here we have question four and you know as always skim read the text get an idea of what it's about then we're going to look at the question okay so look at the question what does this manual tell us about spacer devices so we know it's a manual we know it's about spacer devices so there's not really a lot of key information here so what does it tell us you know which, which of these things is true it really is asking us something like that um, you know this question here can we tell if it's going to be gist or uh, specific information it's a little bit tricky so you know I think that we need to be careful look at the options and the text as well it's not clear it could be either actually I would say from this because it could relate to something specific or it could be about the general meaning okay so let's pick the key words that we have here option a patients should try out a number of devices so try or try out same meaning and number of devices with their inhaler so i would say all of these things oh what did i do all of these things are uh, key so try out a number more than one okay and in b they enable a patient to re receive more Okay, so I think and maybe receive as well. They enable a patient to receive more. That could be key here. And in C is key that we're talking about children and that they are smaller spacers than those for adults. Okay, so then go back to the text, read it in a bit more detail and see if you can find the answer. Feel free to pause this video while you do that okay so number four we have the correct answer is b of course everybody realized that now the part that tells us i would say starting from spacing spacer devices starting there all the way to this part here you know so it gives details i can't highlight all of that just now for some reason I think because of the sample part there but all of that sentence uh, starting space spacer devices uh, going down to there shows us that it's about patients needing to receive more 
uh, in this case because of poor inhalation technique okay so that's why you know it's this is gist of this longer sentence so it's not one specific part it's kind of you know is this specific information is it just it's somewhere in between i would say okay that gives us that okay and let's look at the other ones just so we can see why they are wrong uh, okay and patients should try out a number of devices with their inhaler it said spacer devices should not be regarded as so I don't know what I've done there. I'm going to delete that. It should not be regarded as interchangeable. Okay, so that means that we shouldn't try out lots of different ones. Okay, in this case. Uh, that shows us that A is incorrect. And for C, children should be given spaces which are similar, are smaller, sorry, than those for adults. So it does mention children here, but it doesn't go into any detail of them having smaller ones than adults and that's why C is correct. So by the process of elimination we can see that the answer is B but also this sentence really helps us. So you know, if you are sure you found the right answer you don't need to find the distractors each time but it will help you be more certain that you've got the correct answer. Okay moving on to number five this time so again have a read at the text we can see it's an email uh, you know it can be important to establish what type of text it is to start with and then let's have a look at the question so the email is reminding staff that the okay so this is the email is reminding staff that the so it's kind of asking us what is the purpose of this email isn't it so you know if you've got something as general as that then it's probably going to be a gist question Okay, probably. With, if it says what's the purpose, then we know for sure. In this case, it's probably going to be about just so bear that in mind. Okay, uh, so you know, reminding staff is important here, but basically, it's asking what's the point of this email. Let's look at the options and choose what are the key words. Okay, so we've got in A, we've got benefits outweigh. And dangers those are definitely the key words there okay in B in option B number accidents unacceptable okay those are really the key pieces of information that we have here and in C condition central decision okay so those are really the key things that we're looking for in this text and like I said you know probably throughout the text rather than one specific part of the text in this case okay so pause this video read the text again in a bit more detail and try to choose the correct answer and the correct answer is a okay there's a couple of different uh, parts where it talks about the benefits the first paragraph here really talks about the benefits of uh, of bed rails in this case and the last sentence is key as well in this case you know uh, maybe greater risk of harm for patients who fall out of bed uh, that's more so even though it does talk about some dangers it you know it starts off with the talking about the benefits and then it concludes saying that it can't outweigh the dangers so that's why the correct answer is a so if you look at b and c it does give us numbers of accidents here at the start of the second paragraph but it, at no point does it say something like it's unacceptable you know it doesn't make it doesn't give that opinion it doesn't give that judgment call at any point that you know these numbers are actually unacceptable so we can't find information on that and a patient's condition should, should be central. It does say that they aren't the bed rails aren't appropriate for all patients here in this sentence, uh, but it doesn't say that it should be central to any decision. So we don't have the information there to choose C. So we know the answer is A. Okay. So how's it going? Are you? getting used to this system hopefully it's working for you and you're starting to get a little bit quicker with it as well 
we're just about to move on to the last question here uh, but please remember to like this video if you feel like you're getting some benefit from it and subscribe to my channel you know there's new lessons coming every week and pretty soon once I get more people following my channel I'm going to do live lessons as well so here we go with our final question in this part B of the reading paper again please read this text as quickly as you can to get a general idea and then we're going to start looking at the keywords and thinking if it's gist or if it is a detailed question okay so pause the video if you need to and then let's look at the keywords okay so let's look at the question here what does this extract from a handbook tell us about the analytic drugs okay so all it really tells us here is tell us so you know again this is very general here it's not talking about it doesn't look like it's talking about something specific okay sometimes it, you know you you can make a mistake with these things but this looks to me like it's going to be a general question okay so let's look at the options and pick the keywords so in a i would pick useful uh, and i would pick not fully responsive okay so those are the key things there okay in b i would pick limit need physiotherapy okay those are the key pieces of information there and in the last one care used and extended period all those things are key there okay so have a more detailed read just now at the text pause the video see which option you choose and why okay so let's now have a look at the correct answer so the correct answer is of course a which i'm sure you all picked of course so the key thing here is this part here so not fully responsive becoming drowsy or comatose so actually this is a specific detailed question the question looks like it's not but it is in fact specific detail because we can see it's this tiny little part a few words of text gives us the answer okay and for the distractors uh, this one says limit need physiotherapy and it does mention physiotherapy but it says it must be combined with active physiotherapy so we can see that b is just incorrect and c uh, it says there's no stimulant available for long-term use okay in this case so that doesn't mean that care should be taken it means it's just not available okay so how did you do did you get this one correct did you get the rest of them correct as well do you feel like this technique or this procedure is helping you please let me know in the comments Okay, so what I would recommend that you do now is go and get another part B, for example, sample test three from OET's website, okay? And try to, do, try to use this procedure, looking at all the different things we looked at today, keywords, trying to find distractors, all of those things, and try to do it timed, okay? So give, even though part B and C are together and you have 45 minutes, try to do just 12 minutes in part b okay and time yourself use this procedure see how many you get correct okay feel free to let me know put a comment below let me know how you've done okay uh, also remember i have another channel a general english channel which might be useful for you with grammar vocabulary lessons things like that it's called learn english with alex uh, please check that out as well Follow me on all the usual social media for updates. I do live lessons as well, which you might find useful uh, just now. Those happen on a Thursday at one o'clock UK time. So check me out on Facebook or Instagram, where, wh whichever one you use to find out more information. Okay, so thanks very much for watching today and good luck with your OET preparation.